So just a few words from me then, just to um, just to introduce um, Beatrix here and 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 our background, how we came to know each other, and and, um, and why I invited her to uh, to be involved. Um, I saw uh, Beatrix present, and I think this was your first UK talk. Beatrix, was that was that right? Do I, do I remember that? Yeah, correctly? first meetup talk. Yeah, <laughs> first first UK meetup talk, and um, uh, and it was it was like uh, fascinating. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was at a uh, an AI event. Um, and Beatrix was, um, I've probably told some of you this story already because it kind of really, I found it just amazing. Like we've organized so many of these AI events and this was the one that stood out for me. Um, and Beatrix walked through uh, how she, she started by taking a um, some McDonald's adverts, showing some McDonald's ad adverts that had been created, um, you know, a cost of, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands, but you can imagine a marketing team putting together these, these adverts um, and then showed how, you could use ChatGPT to firstly analyze the adverts that were there um, and then create prompts for creating similar adverts. And of course it didn't do it straight away, um, but Beatrix using her background in marketing and advertising and, and, and that kind of thing was able to create these adverts that were like, I swear some of them you wouldn't have been able to spot which were AI and which were, um, which were authentic. Um, so yeah, for, it, just like it was amazing, she did it like literally live. And so, yeah, so it was a real kind of game changer. I had no idea that ChatGPT could do some of these things. Um, so I followed up afterwards, we got chatting and I was like, you know what, we need to get in front of the fractionals and, and see what we can do. Um, so that's that's my uh, my introduction. That's that's why I invited Beatrix to, to be here. Um, Beatrix, would you mind maybe just giving a, a bit of background on on yourself and, and maybe your lead up to uh, to that event? Yeah, of course. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation first. Uh, so yeah, briefly about my background. Uh, I've been working in digital marketing for over 15 years now. Um, I started my career in Budapest. I'm Hungarian originally, and I can see a Hungarian name <laughs> here uh, among the participant, participants. So um, and I always worked on the agency side uh, in Budapest in 2012. I have also started my own social media marketing agency, a uh, small boutique agency. We were specialized for social media campaigns. We have worked with many, many big brands, including Estee Lauder companies, Nivea, Forbes, and the European Parliament itself. I'm very proud of the fact that actually I was personally responsible for the um, for the social media campaigns for the last two European elections uh, in Hungary as well. Uh, so yeah, I do have a massive background in digital and especially in, in social. And then I exited my social media marketing agency in 2019, 2012. Uh, I merged it into Dance Vegas Network uh, in Budapest, and after that, I moved to London. So this is my fourth fourth year in London. Um, in the meantime, I also lived a little bit in Bhutan, in the Himalayas, working as a digital marketing tutor uh, or trainer there. And um, yeah, I'm also working as a freelancer or contractor, if you like. Um, I'm working so the my and my passion for AI came just very recently, basically after the release of ChatGPT. Um, I consider myself a very innovative and curious person in general, and I'm also an early adopter. And uh, I remember the first the first time I tried chat gpt i had the feeling that okay this is going to be something big so i decided to um basically deep dive into not just chat gpt but ai uh, and specialize my basically specialize or niche down for the intersection of of marketing especially advertising and ai um, and that's what i'm doing i'm working with marketing teams as well helping them to integrate ai tools into their everyday work and i'm so happy because that's exactly what you were asking how ai can um can basically help with the marketing workload and yeah the 
my, um, and I don't know whether it's a good news or bad news, because there is a huge professional debate over that, whether it's a good news or bad news that, but actually AI can um, take over <laughs> many of our tasks. I'm always struggling what's the best verb for that. Uh, people don't like um, if I'm saying that it is replacing job roles, but actually it is. Um, so yeah, that's that's about me. Fantastic. Thanks, Beatrix. Lots of stories I'm sure we could go into there working in the Himalayas. It sounds interesting. Um, but I'm going to try and not get too distracted um, by that kind of thing and keep it, uh, yeah, keep it on topic. Keep that for another talk because I could talk about Bhutan for a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. um, so so coming on to the, the advertising thing, um, we're going to have uh, on the call and people listening afterwards all sorts of different levels of experience. So I did a, uh, a course in advertising. It was once a passion and where I wanted to go into. So I kind of like, again, it's probably why I was drawn to um, to the talk of the AI thing. Um, but I know that it's not, there's there's many, many different parts about advertising that are kind of complicated and nuanced and stuff. So starting at the beginning, you, you talked about this McDonald's thing being a campaign, right? A short campaign that, that they could use to promote a certain thing. Can you can you talk just a little bit about campaigns as a way to introduce this this topic and, and why companies use campaigns and, and how how to think about them? Yes. Uh, so in, in simple terms, basically, companies are using campaigns when they want to push a specific message to a specific um, target audience within a shorter period of time. Maybe, <laughs> I don't know what, how formal uh, that definition was, but actually, just for fun, because I knew that Barry will ask me this question. So I asked ChatGPT as well, just to show you how much it can help you that, how would you explain to professionals what a marketing campaign is? <laughs> just for fun. And I wanted to um, show you this, but obviously, and I'm, um, completely transparent about it as i said i'm uh, i'm working as a teacher and educator at the moment and working with companies i'm using a lot uh chat gpt even to help me basically perfectly articulate or even structure my thoughts obviously my knowledge is there but it helps a lot to structure uh our thoughts even if we have such a I mean, like, obviously, for me, simple question of what a marketing campaign is. So, yeah, I asked this question. And you know what's great? It gave me a really great definition and a structured breakdown of what a marketing campaign is. I hope you can see the screen as well. I don't know whether you want to read it. But, yeah. If I had to just summarize and simplify it, a campaign is aimed to deliver a specific message uh, to a specific target audience within um, a given period of time. Fantastic. Okay, thanks for that. And and for everyone else, we can share all the ChatGPT things that Beatrix creates here. We can share afterwards, so you can read up afterwards, go deeper, sure. um, and there's some pretty interesting stuff coming up around that. Um, the, the reason I wanted to start with this campaign thing, and I, I like the way you explained it there, a specific message to a specific audience, is because I think it was one of the things that helped me in understanding that like, you don't have to be the same thing all the time on social media, or you don't, you don't have to, yeah, this is how I promote myself, and this is how I will always promote myself, and all this kind of thing. The idea of creating things around a campaign, as you say there, you can create a specific message to a specific audience. So everyone here, I assume, is a fractional um, and, and has... I'm, I'm sure some of them have a very defined ICP and, and certain people they can speak to, but I'm guessing that it would be possible to create these campaigns where you think, right, we're going to pitch to these people and then a complete different campaign to pitch to a different set of people uh, with a different message. Yes, exactly, exactly. So that's why I basically oversimplified the definition of a campaign, but I'm, I'm happy that uh, uh, if it helped you to, to better understand what's the whole purpose. And uh, yeah, especially also on social media. So 
how we work in social media and as i had i had actually my background in social media so when it comes to campaigns in social media and when i'm building social media strategies i'm also building a so-called always on strategy which is the always on ongoing communication on social media channels and actually this uh, principle applies or to any brand or even to your personal uh, brand as well. So you have to have a strategy, you have to have some structure in your mind, what topics you wanted to talk about on your socials, like on an ongoing uh, basis, which can be very challenging actually over time. And we always build campaigns on top of that. When you have an extra, and I think that can be a, a promotion or, or any, basically any um, any promotional message that you wanted to push again I'm simplifying but if if there is a message that you wanted to push harder uh, and to get it through to a specific target audience then that's where we use the campaign method which yeah, if we are talking about social media and I guess many of you are using LinkedIn um, for for your marketing as well that can come on top of your ongoing um, ongoing communication and target uh, maybe a niche or smaller target audience uh, within within your normal target. Fantastic. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. Um, so if you were to start then, um, sorry, what you've just said there with the always on is throw me a little bit with, with where I was going to go. Um, but let's say for a... Um, what, what I guess I'm trying to do, and I love the fact that you're oversimplifying these things, like perfect, exactly what we need. Um, but for uh, for a fractional, um, like, how would you take what you what you've seen from like these big companies like Nivea, Estee Lauder, and and, uh, and and places that you've worked for, and apply those kind of big company practices to these kind of small one person fractional um, service offerings in terms of creating these these campaigns? Like, how can we oversimplify what what the the, the big folk do, um, and and learn from that? To you know, where do you start when creating a campaign? Yeah, the good news is that it is absolutely possible. So what I'm always saying that actually what the big brands are doing for their marketing, obviously with huge resources and budget, but that can be translated um, to basically any other industry with more limited resources as well. So uh, what I would I would recommend in this case, um, I think for, for a fractional a campaign could be targeting one specific target audience because I'm sure that you have multiple target audiences or you have segmented your target audiences to, um, to several segments and uh, you can have um, and I, I'm, I would assume that these segments can be very distinctive from each other. So you can say even seasonally that, okay, for a couple of months, I'm focusing on this segment within my broader target audience and develop messages, targeted messages, specifically this smaller group of uh, potential clients and try to bring, um, try to bring value to these smaller group of group of people okay that makes a lot of sense and is that how you would think about it like seasonally is that just one option or is there a bunch of different ways that you like could you do the same um i'm sure this is going to be an obvious no but could you run two campaigns at the same time um like to two different actually people you or... can okay actually you can so it's not an obvious no okay uh, because if again if we take the big brands as an example, they typically run multiple campaigns at the same time as well. Uh, and with the help of digital marketing tools, you can basically completely separate your campaigns and target your small groups. I think paid ads are the best solution for that to target uh, your smaller target audiences or segments with those targeted messages so that's absolutely possible to run uh, multiple campaigns simultaneously um, in in general and and how can you decide um, so seasonality would be I think seasonality is the most obvious one so as you can see I mean like 
what campaigns are the big ones now running? It's Easter. Easter is not, I mean, like the typical public holidays are always uh, campaign opportunities for big brands. I don't think that for fractionals, uh, <laughs> Easter is, is, uh, is, is something important or significant in particular, but, um, but in, in, I would, I would translate seasonality maybe to trends, even to technology trends. Uh, so, for example, AI can also AI and it, 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 and its advancements can be a specific target. And I think many of you could find a connection within with your expertise, AI, and your target uh, potential target audience as well. Obviously, I think probably the biggest trend at the moment is AI, but we always has certain trends. Um, so definitely, and even even the I would say calendar, some calendar events can also be relevant. So I'm sure that you have some experience, uh, not just some, probably a lot of experience within your industry when when your target audience has the when they make let's say bis, these business decisions about consultancy contracts. I'm not familiar with your industry, com being completely honest with you, but I would assume that these hiring processes or these decisions would take place towards the end of the year when businesses are planning the next business year. Am I correct, assuming that that there is? I think, I think it's, it's going to be very, very um, all over the place. I, I expect for... for various different industries and various different different professions but certainly there, there'll be a part of that um obviously new budgets um often bring new opportunities and that kind of thing but i like the idea around around pegging it to specific kind of uh events and and, and certainly trends like it could be the sort of thing that um you know if people got together and, and discuss those trends you could you could um you could analyze those a bit better um Richard, so you've got your, your hand raised there. I was just going to say that the, the, the end of year thing, start of year thing, I don't know whether it's real. Uh, I suspect not, but it's, it, it is something that I hear from people who are trying to put off making a decision on hiring a fractional CMO. Uh, you know, it's something that we'll come to next financial year. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll assess it again next financial year. I, I think if there was a really urgent pressing need, then that, that end of year thing goes away. Um, but I think it is it, it, it is something that people do start to consider when they're looking at budgets for the next financial year, I think, for sure. Sure. Yes. Yes. So I think so. Yeah. For you, I think that would be a good timing uh, for a specific campaign. And definitely I would I would say like I would skip the summer time. Potentially, I guess that your um target audience decision makers are on holiday, we can, I, I have always always seen that trend, even with big brands, that summertime was quiet. There are some brands which are extremely active during summer, a small, I would say a small uh, segment of brands, but most companies go quiet uh, because everyone is on holiday. And especially in the B2B industry, not too many decisions are made in June, July, August. Uh, so yeah, in the B2B industry, my personal experience is and having worked and is also having uh, working with companies is that like the busiest periods are um, like the spring months, I would say from depending on spring sometimes starts in February this year. I don't know what your experience is, but this February was extremely quiet. January was strong. The year started stronger, I think, than usually, but then it went completely quiet in February. I don't know. We, I think we experience very strange market dynamics at the moment. But like normally, I would say like April, May are the busiest months, and then and I guess your experience is similar. And then October, November. So I would consider um, consider those months pushing pushing those months. Yeah. okay okay so i'm keen to get to the bit which i'm excited about um which is where um we can play with your your toy um beatrix the, uh, <laughs> the chat gpt that uh that you've created 
Um, so this is uh, this came from us talking about trying to find a few examples um, how we could actually use GPT. So this, you know, for anyone on the call, could what would they do first? What would they do next? How would they engage with um, these AI tools? So I'll, I'll hand over to you for uh, for this bit to to walk us through. Uh, um, give me a second. Yeah. yeah sorry. Cool. I'll hand over to you for um for for yeah, just walk us through what 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 you're doing here and and um and, yeah. and yeah, your thoughts around it. Yeah. So I have prepared a simplified process uh for you just to demonstrate how I would approach and how I would make potentially use AI if I were in your position. And again, forgive me, <laughs> I'm coming from a slightly different industry. Um but I try to do my best. So um, for uh, I haven't asked just before we dive into this, who has a chat GPT subscription here? Can I, I, I can't see everyone in the, can I ask you to raise your hands with the raise hands function within the Zoom because then I will see. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. I can only see four people on my screen if I am in presenter mode yeah we have to okay so three okay so for this use case you need the paid uh chat gpt subscription i highly recommend okay i'm not affiliated with open ai but uh the chat gpt plus is a game changer it's i think it's a best investment that you can make into your productivity highly recommend it it's 20 dollars a month and for 20 dollars you get basically um, a swiss or knife extra colleague who can do almost not anything but lots of things uh for you so uh so yeah so for this you would need the subscription so what I have done, um, I have prompted it that act as a fractional CTO in London. You have experience with AI startups, okay? Just replace the elements to your prof profession. You need to get new clients, so you need to come up with a structured sales plan. So first, I have assigned a role to ChatGPT. I would highlight this, like when I said, act as a fractional CTO in London. It is a very useful prompting technique. Okay, uh, I highly recommend using this technique whenever you um, chat with ChatGPT just to start assigning a role uh, to them. And it can be anything. It can be absolutely no marketing. It can be a car mechanic for you or a doctor, or I don't know, um, therapist. Many people use for therapy as well. Um, then you have to give some context. So the context was you have experience with AI startups, you need to get new clients, so you need to come up with a structured sales plan. I, with that, I have defined the desired outcome. It is all about delegation, and I'm sure that you all have lots of experience with delegation. So when you work with ChatGPT, that's basically the similar thought process, how you would delegate the task to a coworker or colleague. So I have also defined, well, what happened here? And this is when ChatGPT crashes. Cool. Um, give me a sec. Let me, I hope I can bring this back. Yeah. So, and yes, it is a bit unstable, not just a bit, a lot. Uh, okay, but we are back. So, um, I want you to follow these steps. I gave it the steps, identify three ideal client profiles. Actually, Mark, your document helped me a lot. You gave me very good insights. So I have done this based on those. Define the value proposition for each. Craft a compelling message for each ICP based on the value proposition. Give me ideas on how to reach the ICPs with tailored messages, suggest copy and visual concepts if needed. So it is again important that I have given all the details that I wanted ChatGPT to go through. But I said, let's do this step by step. I will give you feedback after each step. This is again a very, very useful technique because 
if I didn't prompt it, um, if, if I if I haven't added this, let's do this step by step, then it could go crazy and do everything in one go. Um, so I said, step by step, I will give you feedback after each step. And I said, ask me any questions you need to know in order to give me the best possible outcome. That's also a very important and useful prompting technique. If you don't even really know what info you need to provide, you can use this technique and it will ask lots of um, questions. Um, okay, so based on this, we get through through three potential ICPs for uh, in the AI CTO industry, like early stage AI startups, growth stage AI startups, and non-tech companies seeking AI transformation. And then it has crafted even the value proposition uh, for each um, target audience or ICP. Okay. I have positively affirmed that, okay, yes, this aligns with my experience. Actually, this is also a very helpful technique. Positive affirmations work very well, not just with humans, but with ChatGPT as well. So yes, this aligns with my experience and the services I can offer. Let's move on to the next step. Um, then it started crafting messages for each ICP, which I won't read out everything loud because that would take hours. And then ideas on how to reach uh, them with tailored messaging. So we are still working with three, uh, three um, ICPs. So LinkedIn networking, industry events, partnerships, targeted digital uh, advertising, suggested copy and visual concepts, uh, for each of them. Then I decided uh, to first focus on one of the ICPs, which I just picked the non-tech companies seeking AI transformation. Again, this is, a, this is a very useful technique, not to work on everything at the same time, but break it down um, into small tasks. Again, as you would do with an actual human uh, in reality. So I asked it to first work on one ICP. And then I said, OK, give me a detailed step-by-step -step strategy on how to locate, even just how to locate these companies, and how to connect with them. Uh, and then it gave me lots of tips on how to locate uh, these businesses, like with industry analysis, company profiling, utilize business directories, networking, uh, con through content marketing and LinkedIn, obviously, direct outreach, then networking, uh, offer value first, how to follow up. So it very, I mean, I, I'm sure that nothing is really new here for anyone in the room, but the structure it gives us immediately is, I think, very, very helpful. Um, then, again, based on all these suggestions, I just picked one idea that I liked, which was this initial consultation idea. And I said, based on your suggestions, I want to offer a 30 minutes free consultation to my LinkedIn network on a given date to capitalize on scarcity. Okay, this was my added value as a marketer. And I'm just asking you here, I'm, I would assume that some of you are actually offering free initial consultations. But what do you think? What's the difference between offering a free initial consultation, like in general, on an ongoing basis to every potential prospect, or say, or using the scarcity method? If you have any thoughts on that. Well, the scarcity method should uh, improve. Well, people don't want it. It's fear of missing out. 
Oh, well, people people don't people don't generally do anything unless there's a, a fixed time slot or some compelling event. Yes, exactly. And also, as Janos says in the chat, the scarcity will look it more valuable, the exact same thing, actually. But it just a focused effort. You can say that, OK, this consultation opportunity will be only available on this specific date. My whole day is dedicated, dedicated to this uh, consultation, and you can book in your slots. But otherwise, I'm very busy. I'm not offering these free consultations. I'm only offering this on this specific day. Yeah, Mark? Uh, oh, am I back? Yeah. Um, yeah, this, I understand what you mean with the scarcity method, but then that's not something you would do or would want to do just once a year, for example. So how long, for example, between these kind of one-off offers is a, a kind of, guide if you like or a rule of thumb to follow yes that's a very good good question and uh, i agree with you that you could do this several times over a year but not too many times because if you are doing it too often that you are killing the initial the, the fundamental idea the scarcity itself um i would i would it really depends on the individual circumstances, I would say, but let's say I would do one day per quarter. I wouldn't even do this monthly. Let's say one day per quarter or something like that. Then you say that, okay, every three months, I have this one day dedicated to free consultations and I'm giving away giving uh, my advice in 30 minute slots for free for those who book in. I'm just wondering actually, is there a way of doing that? Because if that's if you're limiting yourself to just one day per quarter, um what am I trying to say? <clears throat> uh, yeah, there's something there that's in my mind. I'm not sure how to uh, verbalize it at the moment, but that's seems very limiting just doing these free offers one day every quarter. Um, I know a lot of people like myself tend to offer free sessions as part of the like an initial consultation, for example. So I'm just thinking how you would work that into the scarcity method so that you could, I don't know, do more over, a, say, a limited period of a week or something and then do a, the next kind of campaign around those free offers in another quarter. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Or perhaps no, I'm not I, I, I know I know what you mean. Let me show you what ChatGPT came back with. And I think this this itself would be a good discussion point for you, even with ChatGPT. I mean, like, okay, but I like the idea of scarcity, but these are my thoughts. How could we combine those together? I, I, get, I get what you mean. Uh, uh, but before we move on, can, can I, may I sort of add a, add a bill to Mark's point? Uh, uh, so one thing from my perspective is that, you know, I'm, I'm always open. I, I think it's this distinguishing between what's a discovery call and what's essentially free consulting around a specific problem area. And so, 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 so Mark's point, and I think what you're saying, Mark, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is that you're open for business all the time to have those discovery calls with potential clients. Uh, I think what we're talking about, well, my interpretation of, of this, uh, of this, uh, Sort of scarce slot is okay. Here's a here's a here's a free consult on topic X, which may be your mm -hmm. specialism, and that's the that's the scarce bit. But you can still do those free discovery calls, mm -hmm. and maybe there's a you have yes. your own blend of uh, you know how much you give away during that discovery call, but then you have a clear differentiation that okay, your unique offer for that for your ICP is is X, and that's only available. Once a month, once a quarter. Does, does that does that does that sort of help articulate your your point, Mark? Um, kind of. I mean, I I was differentiating between a discovery call and offering like a, a free advisory session, for example. So it's a free advisory session that I was trying to think about in terms of this scarcity. And it just seemed limiting. But then I'm also at the same time only recently learning about the idea of you know more targeted campaigns and much more kind of niche ICPs and value propositions. So 
something's forming just as we're talking there, so it's still kind of fermenting. But yeah, the idea of these kind of, uh, you know, special offer free sessions uh, makes sense. But then I suppose you could do, or uh, it's an open question, could you do more than one per quarter if they were for different ICPs or pain points, for example? Um, I think anything is possible, but the whole point of the scarcity is to make it limited, yeah. basically. And I very much loved how Ryan, um, how Ryan basically summarized the whole point that yeah, this is this is a consultation which is about the client's uh, any problem that the client comes with, uh, and you don't want to at least not directly sell them anything. Mm. However, on a discovery call, that's clearly and openly about basically selling them yeah. a service. Yeah. So but that was the point I was going to make is a discovery call show will that there is a commitment from the customer. They know that they are going to be sold to in this yeah. scenario because yes. you are trying to discover an opportunity for, for you to work together. Whereas having a clinic or something like that you know, I've, you know, something's happened in my diary. So I've Friday is free this quarter, you know, this, this Friday is free book in for half an hour, bring me your problems. Let's have yeah. some fun. You know? Yeah. I think that. And you just gave me a very good idea. We could ID it on the name. I love the clinic, <laughs> yeah. the clinic idea. We could, we could ID it with ChatGPT as well. Um, so based on this idea, it has structured a plan for me, so with a campaign objective to generate leads by offering a 30 minute free consultation to non-tech companies. Second, secondary objective is to increase awareness within the target audience. It has also just structured the target audience and it has also, uh, it gave me a full campaign timeline as well, like a pre-launch phase launch phase and post-launch. We don't have to agree with everything, so everything can be tweaked, but I think it gives us a very good, at least uh, thinking points, what needs to be thought through um, in such a process. So even we have, so campaign type and pre-launch and post ideas uh, in a daily breakdown, so a teaser post with, with exact content and exact visual, uh, concepts so we have these content ideas for each uh, day for three weeks and even visual concepts more tips and extra tips so I think it really brilliantly acted as a consultant um, I positively affirm, but you could even debate. I, I often do that with GPT actually, that I, okay, that I don't agree with you, change it here and there. Now I uh, I agreed, great, I like the structure and the ideas, let's move step by step from here and generate the exact post content and visual design for each post. So if you look at it now, we have like a structure and a plan, but we still don't have the actual content, what needs to go out. So I said that, okay, from here again, move step by step and create the actual pieces of content for each step and each day. And let's start with the day one post. Um, and uh, yes, and it asked, obviously this is the point where it needed more specific information about my non-existent <laughs> fractional CTO business. Obviously, it can't read your mind. So I had to feed more info about my professional background as a fractional CTO, for which I also used ChatGPT. And let me switch uh, window or tab because in a separate chat, I opened up a new chat and I asked it to act as a fraction as CTO specialized in the AI transformation of non-tech companies. Give me examples for notable projects and transformations mentioning specific industries. So I was trying to uh, 
mimic that I have this experience and it gave me industries, objectives, impacts. So I have used this and copy pasted into the original chat that, okay, draw information. This is my experience. This is the impact that I have made within these industries. Just pull information uh, from this. Obviously you would use your existing experience. Um, and also I have given USPs, uh, which I also just generated, like give me ideas for USP that could set a CTO apart. And it also gave me lots of good ideas for USPs, which I also fed back to the original chat that, okay, you can use this for the content. And it came back with exact posts, given your expertise and details. So we have a day one teaser post content, which I would definitely tweak because this is where you need to further tweak it to reflect your own tone of voice, probably remove the emojis uh, because I don't think, um, actually, I don't know how you feel about emojis. Um, I hate them, especially in professional content. Uh, because I think it just look makes the content itself look unprofessional. But I know from experience that actually uh, uh, the use of emojis in any social media content significantly improves uh, the click-through rate. So you might sacrifice um, the professional look, but the, but ChatGPT by default will put lots of emojis into any generated texts. So you have to just prompt it if you want it to remove it, them, for example. And it will also use, uh, for you to know what you have to be aware of, it will generate American English, US English content by default. You have to be aware of that. You can, but you can prompt it to use British English or international English that will be treat completely different tones and grammar and everything, but by default, it uh, it um, generates US English. Yeah. Um, okay, so we have an actual caption and visual concept ideas. And now I asked it to generate images for the visual style without the text. I, I prompted it to generate the image without the text because I know that the text rendering is still incorrect. And uh, so you will see what happens. And it came back with this. I wasn't happy with this. Um, I would say that this, for this topic in particular, you won't, you, I mean, like, it's not a realistic expectation to expect ChatGPT to generate really good uh, visualizations because I haven't stopped, but uh, for the visual ideas, it gave very good visual concepts, but all the visual concepts were about data, like using infographics and calendars and lots of data, which uh, which I just know from experience that actually ChatGPT can't generate, let's say, an infographic for you, and obviously it would even need the, the data for that. So... So the images won't be really, um, really good. I asked it to generate another variation just to show you that you can always ask for more variations. I think this one is slightly better, but I still wouldn't use it personally if you asked me. So for the, for the visualization, I would recommend using Canva and basically you had to uh, create your own own images, especially if it's an infographics or something uh, more specific, but the ideas are there. The ideas were very good. Um, so yeah, uh, I prompted it to generate something for the teaser posts. It came back with these. You can see that the text is incorrect. So that's the reason why I even told, uh, prompted it to not to include text, but actually it did. Um, and yeah, I just I just played a little bit more with the image generation. 
for some reason it's not loading because it had um, let me reload the page and in the while I'm refreshing the page um, yeah Danny uh, how can you write to train it to write in your individual tone of voice um, I will res respond to that later but there are several techniques for that and can you add your own brand visual no no no, no. I mean like uh, that's and uh, that's the whole point so you can't uh, add your own visuals to uh, chat GPT yet so that's why I'm saying that if you want really good creatives then you have to turn to Canva for the visual bit um yeah you have no control over brand identity and color schemes and stuff like that or just very limited um so i said generate another two images based on your original suggestion suggestion which was this and i copy pasted it its original idea again because uh i just didn't want it to get confused and Again, it cannot really generate a calendar. So as you can see, so these are um, not the best examples, but I wanted to show you the reality and what you can expect from ChatGPT and what you can't expect from it at the moment. In terms of color palette, so for some reason, uh, by default, it decided to generate this green, blue, kind of color scheme, uh, you have this control, this very limited control that you can say that now generate uh, images with like a blue, silver, black color palette. I wanted to show you this. So you can give a few guiding colors like color palette, but you can't give exact color codes or brand guidelines to it to follow. Um, so you see it changed it to this color palette. Um, and now I asked it to generate for another concept, which actually it came up with, but uh, these were also incorrect. So as I said, like this is a very specific topic. Wouldn't I wouldn't recommend using uh, these images actually. Um, and how about the individual, uh, the tone of voice? So yes. So for the tone of voice, one thing that you can do that in ChatGPT, there is a function. If you click on your name, as I'm doing in the bottom left corner, then you go to customize ChatGPT. Then basically you can, uh, you can give your custom instructions and your uh, custom tone of voice. As you see, I only have two instructions here. Never use emojis unless I specifically instruct you, even though it did. Uh, and I prompted it to use international English, but actually, it even for me, it does um, um, US English. So it has its function, this custom instruction, but it doesn't really work for me, to be honest. But what so, but you can experiment with it. Uh, but what works best for me that I'm in like within the chat, I give, I either um, give tone of voice instructions. So I want, let's say like, I don't know, like an informal approachable, friendly tone. That's what I'm typically using. So I'm just within the chat, I'm describing it. Or the other technique is that um, you can give examples like, tone of voice samples that, okay, here is a sample text, maybe let's say from your previous posts and you can, or, or, or from anyone else or from the internet. And you can say that, okay, write the content based on this sample and then mimic its tone of voice. That's what works perfectly. And actually specifically for copywriting, I would uh, suggest another tool, which is called Cloud AI. It is basically a chat GPT competitor. They, the guys founded OpenAI together, 
the company behind uh, Cloud AI is Anthropic, and but they founded together OpenAI years ago. They had a huge debate. They split, and some of the guys have founded this Anthropic, which is backed by Amazon. So it's a massive ChatGPT competitor. I don't know whether you have ever tried this tool, uh, but I use this one a lot as well, especially when I wanted more want more human sounding text. I, I'm putting the link to it uh, in the chat. So specifically for the copywriting bit, I would maybe even switch to Cloud AI because that's what I'm doing most of the time uh, and uh, and prompt Cloud AI for the copywriting, the actual caption bit, uh, because yeah, it just does much better. It's much more human sounding. That's the best to explain. So yeah, this is what I wanted to show you. I don't know whether you have any more questions. I think it's amazing, uh, Beatrix. Um, obviously, I'm slightly biased on this, um, but uh, <laughs> no, I think it, I think it's so powerful. I think if you um, if you look at how complex, how much you get back. If you if you paid thousands to a marketing agency and got that kind of thing back, you'd be like, this is this is really really strong, and you can you can do it there in you know next to no time at all. With, with a few prompts. I think it's, um, I personally think it's amazing. Just quickly, one question for me, and I see Richard's got his hand up as well. Um, is Claude free as well, or is that? Uh... Um, yes, yes, Claude is free. And the actually the thing is, since the founders were the same, they found, as I said, they founded OpenAI together. So the GPT-4 technology, which is paid in uh, ChatGPT, is actually available for free in Claude. But you have um, you have um, a limit on. But you, actually, I don't have a subscription on Claude. I only have the ChatGPT subscription. So the free Claude limit was enough for me so far. So yeah, it is free to some extent. But Claude cannot generate images. Yeah. Um, okay. For example, awesome. so why you can use Claude for free? And yeah, just an interesting bit that Claude AI is not available in the EU for example. So we are very lucky. My friends in Hungary, they hate me because they always that now that code is so much better in copywriting and they they really they are really keen to try it and they just can't. It's not available in any of the EU countries. So oh. I don't know. but it's available for us here and highly recommend using it. And uh, someone was asking about Gemini since I'm just talking about the comparison. Yes, of course, I do have I do have the Gemini Advanced as well. Um, I would say, I mean, like I have run lots of tests and experiments on Gemini as well. Even I have tested the US version of, of Gemini, which is more advanced than the one which is available here. The, the US version of Gemini can generate images as well. If you, I just uh, used it through a VPN. Uh, um, I think, I prefer ChatGPT and Cloud over Gemini, to be honest. Uh, what they say that in theory, it's critical thinking is better. I have tested the critical thinking. I'm, I'm not sure about that. I think it's like similar to me. Uh, the one, one huge benefit of Gemini is that Gemini is real-time browsing the internet and including YouTube. So my favorite use case for, for Gemini is that, for example, if you wanted to learn a new topic, you can can prompt Gemini to create a learning path for you in that specific topic using YouTube videos. And it will just basically pull and select the relevant YouTube videos uh, for your topic. And like that's, that's a good use case. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Richard. Richard. Um, thank you. Oh, thank you for identifying our first Brexit benefit. Um, that's amazing. <laughs> you might want to write to Jacob Rees Mogg and tell him that. Um, uh, thank you. Lot. I think it was really, really helpful. And, and one of the things that you've done for me is, is kind of change my approach to this. I had kind of, um, for, for want of a better metaphor, really. Um, kind of treated 
these things as servants before, not as employees, not as not as co-workers, as it were. So I tend to be quite dictatorial in I need this, this and this. But the way you've done it is much more as you were delegating to a junior member mm -hmm. of staff. Um, mm -hmm. And I think what that forces you to do is give much more detailed and, and better prompts in the first place, right? So I think that's, I think a, that's a real Resulting in better outcomes. Actually, that's a proven method. Yeah. It's just, I mean, like, I'm, I'm, you can't imagine how many hours I'm spending literally reading through research papers and stuff like that on how to prompt. Yeah. Uh, correct. Um, so that's actually a proven prompting method that um, if you if you treat it as a partner and the positive affirmations, as I said, literally result in better outcome. Yeah, it makes absolute sense as to why that would work as well. So uh, uh, thank you for doing that. Um, just very quickly, what, what was the, what's the difference in what you showed us on the paid version of chat GPT version to, uh, to the free version? Yeah, there, so on what I have showed you, the main difference is the image generation. You can't generate images in the free one at all, but uh, the paid version hallucinates much less as well um and it's faster um and it has lots of extra functions for example data analysis what we haven't talked about uh at all in this call but i would assume that uh, that's also something interesting for you so just to give you an idea data analysis function is available in the paid one how you can use it basically you can upload an entire spreadsheet i would so you can you can upload an entire any spreadsheet and it will do a full on business analysis on the data found uh, in the in a in the file and it can also generate like graphs and everything for you however and that's a very important disclaimer here i would never ever recommend anyone uploading any confidential data into chat gpt okay uh, OpenAI is open about uh, using all the data that you feed into the tools for training purposes. Even in the paid version, they have an enterprise subscription, and they only guarantee in the enter uh, they only guarantee kind of confidentiality or not using your data for training purposes in the enterprise solution. So this this. Um, data analysis function is uh, is very tempting um, and it's good. I mean, like, let's say if you wanted to analyze, I don't know, like a Google campaign spreadsheet, maybe I would upload that, but I would definitely not upload, I don't know, like a full, I don't know, PNL for a business, for example. Um, so yeah, be careful with that. Glad you included that at the end. Um... Hey, Beatrix, thank you so much for being here. For everyone else that's joined us, thanks for um, for getting involved. Um, I'd highly recommend uh, following Beatrix on um, LinkedIn. Again, I think that's that's one thing like, I gained a lot from seeing the initial um, uh, presentation, but then from following and seeing like constantly, as as you say there, you're reading this research and you're constantly, not just reading the research, but constantly experimenting and playing with um, with various bits of it and that I've sort of seen how you combine various kind of different AI things together. Um, so yeah, highly recommend everyone um, does a follow, uh, gives a follow, but um, yeah, I've got to shoot at this point. I've got a, um, a hard stop. Um, I think you're the same Beatrix or are you? Um... Yeah. No, no, thank you. Just one, one more sentence, just to respond to Danny's question. So I have to prompt a uh, tone of voice to Claude. Um, the exact same way, actually, but you will you will find out that actually Claude, just try it, try it out. I mean, like you have to give much less instructions for Claude in terms of tone of voice. It's just, I don't know, like it's fundamentally much better in human sounding text. Yeah, just have a bit of play with it. I've put my LinkedIn um, into the chat in the meantime, if you wanted to. Follow me there as well. I'm more than happy to connect with you. And thank you so much for the opportunity and for all your questions. Thank you. Brilliant. That was super. Thanks Amazing. so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.